Yeah. Happy Sunday to you all. Happy Sunday to everyone in the sanctuary of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I'd like to now invite Sister Fumi, Oluremi, to lead us into the presence of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray for our marriages and single. And uh, the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 18, 22 says, Also find a wife, find a good thing, and obtain favor from God. So let us thank God for our marriages, for the life of our singles. Let us remember what God has done in our marriages, in our lives, in our families. Let us thank God. Church, let us pray to bless the name of the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you. Father Lord, we worship you. We honor your holy name. We honor you, God, because this is another opportunity, Lord, to come before you. Father, we thank you for our marriages. We thank you for all our singles. We thank you for what you started in our lives as a church. Even as a family, we're here to say thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you because this is what you've ordained, Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us even to go into marriages. We thank you, oh Lord, for all our singles in this church. Father, we just want to say blessed be your name, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. Oh Lord, our Father, we thank you. We honor you. Father, we thank you for the blessings upon all our marriages, oh Lord. Father, we just want to say you are worthy of our praise this morning. Lord, we exalt your holy name, Lord, who is like unto the whole Lord among the gods. We just want to say thank you for all the marriages in WCC, for all the families that are connected online. Father, we just want to say we all love you, Lord. We thank you. We worship you for the lives of the singles one in our midst, oh Lord. We thank you for all the marriage one in our midst, oh Lord. We just want to say be that exalted, be that glorified, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we're going into prayers, Father, please go with us this morning and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Brethren, we're going to pray. I love prayer. I love, you know, those prayers that you send back to hell. So we're going to pray this morning regarding our marriages. We're going to say every evil deep secret. If working against my marriage, receive the fire and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil deep secret, working against my marriage, receive the fire of the Lord and scatter in the name of Jesus. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, our Father, we pray this morning, every evil deep secret that is working against any marriage in our midst, oh Lord, in our church. Father, we pray that the Holy Ghost fire will consume them and scatter them this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, our Father, we pray every evil deep secret that is working against any marriage in our church, in our family. Father, we pray that let the fire of the most I God consume them and scatter them this morning in the name of Jesus. Uh, you evil deep secrets hear the word of the Lord this morning. Any power that is working against any marriage in our church Father we pray this morning let them be scattered by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, be scattered this morning in the name of Jesus. Uh, every deep secret working against any marriage in our church in our family. Oh Lord we pray even for those that are connected online if there is anything that is working against any marriage this morning. Father, we call the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost. Let them be consumed by fire this morning. In the name of Jesus, be consumed this morning. In the name of Jesus, ah, we scatter you now. In the name of Jesus, evil deep secrets, walking against any marriage, oh Lord, we come against you. The fire of the Lord is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Be scattered this morning. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. We are going to pray again. We are going to say, Destiny Destroyer, targeting my marriage. I cast you half night by fire in the name of Jesus. You destiny destroyer targeting my marriage. I cast you half now in the name of Jesus. Destiny destroyer, hear the word of the Lord that are targeting our marriages in WCC. We come against you. We cast you half by fire 
in the name of Jesus. Uh, you destiny destroyer, targeting marriages in WCC. We pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, we cast you out by fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, you destiny destroyers, uh, targeting marriage in WCC. All the families connected online, we pray against you. We cast you out by fire. In the name of Jesus, uh, destiny destroyer, hear the word of the Lord this morning. We are standing on the word of God because it's a good thing, Lord. Father, we pray anyone standing out there that wants to destroy any marriage in WCC or in the families of those that are connected online. Father, we come against them. We cast their heart by fire right now. In the name of Jesus, uh, we cast their heart by fire now. In the name of Jesus, uh, in Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. We are going to pray again. We are going to say evil conclusion against my marriage. Blood of Jesus, break and scatter them now in the name of Jesus. You evil conclusion against my marriage. Blood of Jesus, break them and scatter them now in the name of Jesus. You evil conclusion against my marriage. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Be scattered now. Be scattered by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. You evil conclusion against my marriage. Against any marriage in this WCC or people connected online. We have the blood of Jesus to break you, to scatter you now. In the name of Jesus, we break you by the blood of Jesus. We scatter you now. In the name of Jesus, evil conclusion from our father's house, from our mother's house, anywhere they come from. We scatter you by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, be scattered by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' most wonderful name, we are prayed. We're going to receive the fire of God to our marriages. So we're going to pray that my marriage receive the fire of God. Even if you're not married and you're still trusting God, we can pray these prayers ahead. So we're going to command our marriage this morning. We're going to say my marriage receive the fire of God and be released to me now in the name of Jesus. My marriage, receive the fire of God and be released to me now in the name of Jesus. My marriage, hidden in the evil secret places, receive the fire of God, locate me now in the name of Jesus. My marriage, receive the fire of God, be released to me now in the name of Jesus. My marriage, receive the fire of God, be released to me now in the name of Jesus, my marriage, hear the word of God, wherever you've been hidden by the evil one, be released to me right now, in the name of Jesus, be released to me right now, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed, we are going to pray this morning, every evil attachment, delay my marriage, be destroyed by fire, in the name of Jesus, every evil attachment, delay my marriage, be destroyed by fire now. In the name of Jesus, evil attachment, delay my marriage, delay any marriage for singles in our church this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus, be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus, any evil attachment from our father's house, any evil attachment from our mother's house, even in the family that we came from, we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, uh, that are delaying marriages in WCC. Father, we pray this morning, let them be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh Lord, our Father, we destroy them. Any delay in our marriages uh, for all the singles one in our church. Uh, Father, let them be destroyed this morning. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in Jesus' most wonderful name, we are prayed. We're going to pray, brethren, again. We're going to say, marital robbers are signed to disgrace my marriage. Be dis destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Uh, marital robbers uh, are signed to disgrace me and my marriage. Die by fire this morning in the name of Jesus. Uh, you marital robbers, uh, we pray this morning, that have been assigned to any marriage in WCC. That have been assigned to any single one is in WCC. We pray that this morning... 
we destroy you. We will say die by fire. In the name of Jesus, uh, you Marita Robert, uh, hear the word of the Lord. Assign it to disgrace any marriage in WCC. We pray against you. Host of heaven is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Be destroyed by fire this morning. In the name of Jesus, uh, you Marita Robert, uh, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, be destroyed this morning. In the name of Jesus, uh, paraventure you've been assigned to that marriage from the pits of hell, from the father's house, from the mother's house. This morning we pray, be disgraced by the fire of the Lord in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We're going to pray again, brethren. Every work of the enemy to frustrate me in my marriage be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Some people are in marriage, but they live in hell. Father, we're going to pray, brethren, this morning that every work, because God cannot ordain marriage and makes people to suffer in that marriage. So we're going to pray to God this morning that every work of the enemy to frustrate me in my marriage die by fire this morning in the name of Jesus. We all singles, we can pray. We married one, we can pray. We can pray into our marriage, even if you're not having any problem. You can pray against it. Every work of the enemy to frustrate me in my marriage, die today by fire in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to come and frustrate me in my marriage, I command it in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. We're going to say again, you power that says I will not marry for all our singles. Oh Lord, disappoint them today in the name of Jesus. Jesus, every power from my father's house that says I will not get married, that says my sibling will not get married, that says any members of this family will not get married, that says any member of this church will not get married. Father, and in the name of Jesus, disappoint them. Let them know that we serve a living God. In the name of Jesus, you power that says all our singles in this church will not get married. We, the, the blood of Jesus disappoints you. In the name of Jesus, Father, let them be disappointed this morning. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Lastly, we're going to say every pronouncement of Marita delay upon my life scatter in the name of Jesus for all our single one we're going to say every pronouncement of Marita delay upon my marriage scatter now by fire in the name of Jesus scatter now by fire in the name of Jesus we're going to pray for all the children all the all the students in our church that are going back to school tomorrow that Lord go with them guide them protect them every unfriendly friends that are waiting for them to take them from the word of the Lord Father Lord let them be departed from those friends in the name of Jesus we ask for wisdom knowledge and understanding upon all our students all our children from this church that when they go out to their different schools. The glory of the Lord shall be upon them. Their life shall be for signs and wonders. Other kids from other family will look at them and see what God cannot do in their lives. And they will come to God through the life of all the kids from this church in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship your holy name. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate. Let's appreciate Sister for me for, for that prayer. Hallelujah. Please have your seat. Have your seat. But as you're sitting, I just want you to tell God this morning, Lord, meet me at the point of my needs. I don't know what you are looking into God for. I don't know what you want God to do for you. As you're sitting majestically, beautifully, begin to speak into your destiny. The Lord, meet me this morning. What is your plan for me, Lord? What is the agenda for my life? What's my destiny? Saying, what is your purpose for my marriage, for my home, for my children? Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak into my destiny. Lord, speak into my life. Lord, speak the word that I need into my life. Lord, make eggs for me, O oh Lord. Make things work together for me. 
anything that is stopping your progress in my marriage? Is this your commandment for me to get married? And to be fruitful in my marriage? Lord, let your word come to pass in my life. I don't have the power of my own daddy. Daddy, speak through me this morning. Speak the word that I need into my homes. Into my home, into our homes. Let the word come out like fire today, Jesus. Any challenges that I'm facing in my marriage, Lord Almighty, begin to move. Every mountain, let it be moved. Every obstacle in my life, take them out in the name of Jesus. Lord, prove yourself. Prove yourself in my life. Prove yourself in everything I'm doing, Jesus Christ. Let your wonderful name be magnified. Do what no man can do, Lord. Do what no man can do. In the life of my children, my own born child, the children that you will have begin to speak into their lives. I will not die when I'm giving birth. I will fulfill my purpose on earth. Speaking to the life of the children you have already. The Lord, make them be what you have proposed them to be on earth. Let them enjoy heaven on earth, Lord. All the struggles I've been through, none of them will bring to it. None of them will go through it, O oh Lord. Lord, make your name be glorified. Daddy, we just thank you this morning. Daddy, we exalt your holy name. As we're going into praise and worship, let your power come down into our midst. Let us receive power and strength, O oh Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. For we pray in Jesus' awesome name. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be inviting the tribe of Osher onto the podium this morning. As we worship God. Let's just worship God with our hands, with a clap offering. As we rise up on our feet this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet this morning as we worship? Thank you, Father. Who is like unto thee? Oh, God. Who like unto thee, oh, oh God, among all the gods, who is like thee, you are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always do in wonders, hallelujah, who is like unto thee, oh, oh Lord, lift up your voice, who is like unto thee, oh, oh God, among all the God. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, always do in wonders, hallelujah, who is like unto thee. Oh, Lord, who is 
mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you. Lord, what man 
provide my shield. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh, Lord. And we call you Yahweh, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You reign, you ancient Zion King. Cados, Cados, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion King. Cados, Cados, you are mighty on your throne. upon my life. <laughs> I can never remain the same again. <laughs> Maruze Balia. Jabez said that your hand be upon me Lord. Uh, the hand of God is upon me. Uh, just like the four Hebrew men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The Bible said in a foreign land where they are slaves. They were ten times better than the magicians. Better than the king's men. Somebody declare this morning the hand of God is upon my life. Nobody encounter God and remain the same. Oh, Luambe, Lori, I am you. Oh, Bemi, for Era, oh, Bemi, Sare, oh, Luambe, Lori, I am your mommy, oh, my destiny. Oh, Bemi, for hey. Oh, baby, sorry. Oh, wow, oh, Lua, I'm bad. The hand of God is upon me. Ha. Lord, I gave me ha. upon my family. Ha. Oh, baby, for I receive speed this morning. Oh, baby, sorry. Oh, wow, oh, Lua, I'm bad. Ha. Lord, I am your mommy. Ha. Oh, baby, for oh, baby, for ha. oh, baby, sorry. Ha. The hand of God is upon my life. I rule the pale yellow dose. I carry oil on my head, <laughs> increasing my hands, speed on my feet. <laughs> Anywhere I go, <laughs> I carry oil on my head. <laughs> the oil of God upon my life, <laughs> there is increase in my hand, <laughs> and I receive speed <laughs> everywhere I go. Oh, wow, Luambe, glory, I hear me. Upon my family, ha, upon my business, ha, upon my ministry, ha, oh, bear me for, oh, bear me sorry, is my strength. Ha, oh, wow, oh, I'm bear, Lord, I'm your mommy. A room like a yaga dosha, somebody declare this morning. Ha, you cannot encounter God and remain the same. Ha, oh, wow, oh, I'm bear, Lord, I'm your mommy. Lord, I'm your mommy. Lord, I'm your mommy. Oh, bear me for. Oh, baby, sorry. Oh, baby, sorry. Oh, baby, sorry. Oh, baby, sorry. Hey, it takes me to where I never expect. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, wow, oh, wow, me. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, if I get all shit, I got you will never have a change. You are the Lord, you remain the same. You will never have a change. Hey. You are the Lord, God. You remain. 
to our God, the, the living Jehovah, the El Shaddai, the Adonai, the lily of the valley, the who is and who is to come, our everlasting Father. Is that how you're going to applaud God? Applaud Him this morning. He's worthy. He's the El Shaddai, the lily of the valley, our maker and our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats. And the presence of the Most High God. And I'm wishing you, everyone again, happy, wonderful Sunday. Happy Sunday to you as I sit majestically as well. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you for joining all this today. Uh, this is uh, our Sunday or usual program whereby we have a talk show. And the talk show of today is taking another dimension. And we have our guest speaker here. So before I introduce them more, I will, be in, I will be inviting them into the podium. Hallelujah. I have Dr. Um, Dr. Misi Chidi Akuna. Please welcome them to the podium. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please come up after you have a seat. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Welcome to Water Spring Christian Center. Before I continue, my name is Lydia Olayenka. I'm a system test analyst and a resident pastor of WCC. Amen. Amen. So before I would like the, our speaker to, to talk, let me just quick, give a quick introduction as I read from my note here. Amen. Dr. Victor Akona delivers guaranteed results guaranteed result to his client based on a bespoke, easy to follow solution. He co authored several books with his wife, with his lovely wife, Chidi Akuna. This includes Bedroom Makeover Plus, mm. Spicy Romance, hmm. Health and Wealth Acceleration, Dynamics of Marriage, Relationship Red Flags, and many more. They coach blogs and Vogue, and their ideas spouse in, I quote, intimacy, builders, relate program for singles. Let me just go back to that. I think I mixed some stuff up. They run the Intimacy Builder Program, a coach program that helps singles attract 
and keep their ideal spouse. In quote, intimacy builder program for singles and also helps engage couples and marriage and marriage couples develop the con their, con their capacity and confidence they need to create romance and intimacy. They can be found on different social media platform, i.e. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Facebook page. Amen. Once again, please welcome with me the Akunas. Hope I pronounced that name properly. God bless you. God bless you. Please, ma'am, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself in case I didn't mention everything in the notes and introduce yourself, please, before I take you to Dr. Akuda. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us, ma'am. And thank you to, to Pastor. We say thank you to him in his absence. And thank you to everyone who is here. It's lovely to be here. I am Chidi Akuna. And I think you did well with what you read. Uh, we run a, an organization called Foundation for Family Affairs. And our mission is simply to connect hearts and raise healthy families. Uh, and we do that through different mediums. One is the coaching program you mentioned, which we tag Intimacy Builder Program. And we are just, uh, we draw a lot of fulfillment from the transformation we see in you know, marriages, in the lives of people as we work with them. We work with singles and oftentimes you uh, see people who sometimes will come to us and say, I am looking for someone. But what we try to emphasize is uh, the fact that we actually attract the people we end up in a relationship with. So what that emph emphasizes is that it's about me. So who I become decides who I end up with. So it's the personal work we have to do. And then we work with um, couples and it's just fulfilling saying that there is hope for marriages, really. It doesn't matter how bad it may seem. Thank you. Please appreciate her for that. Words. Yeah, Dr. Grace. Yeah, yeah, I support the last speaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave everything to you now as you give us the lecture. Yeah. Yes. So, in case anybody has a, uh, a question, then that's when I come in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here as well. And thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you to Pastor and Pastor. Thank you. Um, so, um, what, one thing I wanted to start off with saying is I wanted to share a personal story. Because sometimes, I know we have married people, we have single people, so I like to also say something that will cut across. You know, um, before I married her, you know, I was praying, you know, all this prayer, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes. <laughs> As if you have been closing your eyes before, Lord. <laughs> you know, there are inner eyes and there is an external. So I was trusting God for a life partner because the role I was playing in the organization I belong to. So back uh, in Nigeria, it's called NCCF. It's called it's, um, uh, National Christian Corpus Fellowship. Yeah. You know, so I went to pay her a visit. So after I paid her a visit, I came back. I said, I was telling my, will I call them roommates? Yeah, it was like a roommate. Uh, so we have a division. Let me just not go into detail. So it's like a hostel. So I went to the male hostel where I was living. I said, if you want to marry a good man, I found one person. <laughs> I was recommending her. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know? So they were, and then later on, my wife told me that one of them actually came to ask her out. Because then I was seeing her from the point of view of my friend, not as a woman I could marry. Then each time I tried to, I would then get to that level where we were that close, I could tell her, I'm interested in this lady. Then we went back to Lagos, you know. I would tell her she would have a chat with me. I was just collecting, you know. You know what we call nail, you know, if you understand what I mean. It wasn't working out. Then one day I told myself, I said, ah. one of the things, you know, before you want to marry someone, usually you have a list of something you are looking for. And for me, one of the things I was looking for is 
a woman in which present I can be myself. I don't have to form, I don't have to act. Each time she's coming, I'm trying to create an impression. Not that you will not make an impression, but it's not like you are under, under intense pressure. So I could be myself. I say, ah, does she even have the qualities I want in a woman? <laughs> That's how my eyes clear. <laughs> so I approached her, she ran away. She said that we are brothers. I said, I know, we are changing this relationship. <laughs> We are moving from platonic relationship to, you know, hearing. That's how God just started moving it. And to be honest with you, it's been a good thing. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to buttress what you said, that there is hope for marriages. Honestly, some of us are single. The person that we are supposed to marry, we are around the person. But you are what we call friend zoning. You put the person in a friend zoning way. You are even seeking advice, like I was seeking advice to go and look for people I'm not supposed to be looking for. You know? So, sometimes you have to pray for God to just open your eyes. It might be somebody really close to you. It might be someone that it does not, you know, the spec you have might not be the spec that God actually wants for you. I will explain what I mean. Sometimes you can say, oh, the person has to be, has to have 24 packs. You know? But 24 packs does not open the key of the door of heaven. <laughs> I'm telling you, it does not have fulfilling purpose unless you are into uh, beauty pageantry. But there are some specific qualities you need. Somebody that hears God. I'm telling you, there are times, it took us like almost eight years before we got, oh, God bless us with our first child. It wasn't uh, 24 Park that was doing it. It's someone that can hear, someone that can walk the journey of life. So there are some qualities you need to look for that will be enduring. Somebody that can partner with you on the journey of life. Someone that will help you obey God easily. There are some people that if you marry them, they will pull you away from hearing God because they will be asking you, are you sure? Oh, this is your church thing. Oh, this is your church thing. You know? So there are specific qualities that, you know, we need to look out for, which are, we are going to be talking about. So first thing first is what she said. You have to become the kind of person that you want to attract. You know why? Because the person that you are looking for is also looking for somebody. It's, it's a particular type of person. The person is not just waiting for anything that comes. No. So let's say you want somebody that is God-fearing, someone that has clarity, someone that understands purpose, someone that is... What, what do you think that kind of a person will be looking for? Can you see? So the person too is looking for someone that is also focused on purpose, driven, takes the, God, the things of God seriously. That's one key thing. So you now ask yourself, am I this type of a person? Once you ask that question, you begin to see that there is a gap between where you are and where you need to be, to be able to attract that person. You see? Because that's what we call it, that is a gap. So after then, you now begin to talk about things, you now begin to, um, you now, that's where your eyes begin to open, to begin to see the people around you, like, oh, this person actually has the qualities I want in a woman. And that's what happened to me. So I had to become. So you, why do we uh, emphasize it? Because most people are always focusing on, oh, looking for, looking for, looking for. But actually, you attract. Because if you look at your friends now, you, have, you share common values with them. You share. That's why they say birds of a feather do what? That's just what it is. You attract your type. If you are very negative, you have a lot of negative friends. If you are very positive, you have a lot of positive friends. If you are very driven and um, ambitious, you have a, a lot of ambitious people around you. If you are an entrepreneur, you are likely to attract similar entrepreneurs. Is that correct? That's how like, we work in bands and groups and cliques as human beings. We are social beings. That's why social media is thriving. So the more you become, the more you attract your type. So that's one key thing we need to emphasize. So when you now get married, it's a completely different ball game because there are skills and tools that you need to thrive in marriage. And one of the things that we will observe is that marriage is under intense attack in this time and age. It's an under intense attack. So you read stories, you know, you read um, different, I went on the government website, what we call Organization for National Statistics, and some of the reports that we got there is not very encouraging. That when people get so, that uh, the average marriage that ended as at 2019, as at 2019, lasted for 12.5 years. 12.5 years. In other words, people that have been married over five years, over 10, 12.5, that's the average. So between 
you know, average means that, you know, that's the middle point. So what does that mean? This is when people now begin to get familiar with each other. You know, the person that used to do you, ooh, you you've seen them, for me to the language, you've seen them use the toilet, they do not flush. <laughs> you now come back. So this lady is not so sophisticated. This man is not so sophisticated. You've seen him snore. You're like, mm, every time he's snoring, nobody can sleep here. I can't even concentrate to read my, and pass my certification exam. <laughs> I just, just, you now begin to focus on the minor thing that do not matter. So the person goes somewhere else. People are like, wow, your ideas are like, ah, you just, anytime you just say ideas, it just works. It comes home, you're like, you see the time you're supposed to be coming. Please, the bin is still waiting for you. The environment at home is telling him, go out, go out, go out. The environment outside is saying, relax, chill. And people always go to where they are celebrated. Is that true? I've never seen somebody that was insulted. You say, I really liked it. As you were insulting me, I was feeling the spirit moving. Is anybody here that has been moved by insults? That your boss just told you off in a certain way. Like, boss, I really felt the spirit moving very well. Do it again. Why? It doesn't work that way. We like to be praised because we are made in the image of God. The Bible says God inhabits what? The praises of his people. If you say to a man, there is something about you that is just different. I'm so glad I did not miss it. Every each time I, every, that the fact that you are in my life has made me better. And you give him practical examples. Ah, the guy who, <laughs> why? Men like admiration. I'm telling you. If you say to a woman, I'm going to do anything possible to make you secure, that you don't have to be concerned of whether I love you or not. I'm going to do everything to, because women like affection. That's why sometimes men will say, ah, our women, you know, every time you ask them alpha, you know what I mean by alpha, like, uh, we have a mixed motive, so I have to quote some things. You know, the other room, alpha. Yeah, mm, mm -hmm. Okay, everybody can call you. All right, so, and then they are wondering, the men are always saying, no, 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 no. Uh, sorry, the women are always It's because women, they like to be built up. You can't just come and say, hey, no. You have to prepare from the morning. Say, hello, how are you? What do you want, the cup of coffee? <laughs> the woman will be like, hey, this guy, I know where you're going. <laughs> because they know your moves. Women has intuition. Before you take the first step, they can see 50 steps that you have taken. <laughs> you know, how are you? I just think about you today. You remember the other advice you gave me? I used it. Now everybody just clapping for me. Ah, ah. The woman is feeling like, ah, I'm valuable in this guy's life. You know? You, she makes something at home. You're like, wow. Oh my goodness. The way I'm eating this thing, I'm just receiving anointing. Even though you, she knows you are joking. But you are saying things that is building her up. When is time? Ah, easy. But sometimes we were counseling a couple the other day and the man was like, eh, even though I don't do what I'm supposed to do, but you are supposed to now, you are supposed to understand. I said, it doesn't work like that, uncle. Yeah, because women need to be built up. Their emotions are like a big ship. You know, like a ship. You can't just turn it like a bike. Like, oh, you are going this way, turn this way. No, you have to nudge, 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 nudge. But for a man... It's like, uh, you know, what you call gas cooker. Once you put it, wah, the whole light is shining. But a woman is like hot stove. It builds. But once it's building, you better be ready. <laughs> Two of you went to the house today. So what we're trying to say is that there is hope for marriages. There is hope for marriages. I'm just trying to, there is hope for marriages. So now looking at that, what are the different things that marriages are experiencing today? They are things that can be addressed if they are addressed at the right time. Sometimes, because of the pressure of work, I mean, the cost of living, this one is coming home, the other one is leaving, there is no time to build that connection with your partner. There is no time to play. There is no time to relax. And sometimes, if you don't have some people around you that really helps you, so let me just say something. You know, yeah. now, I was telling you earlier on about the, about the statistics. Let me just quickly add one more. So, 
the age for divorce that was reaching there is between 46 for men and 44 for women. What is usually happening within that time? Midlife crisis. Is that correct? Where the man is asking, is this the end of my life? Is this all I'm going to be doing? Is there more to life? The woman is saying, I've been living my life for my family. What have I done for myself? And so, instead of having a conversation with each other and see how they can support each other, they're having a conversation with somebody else that is advising them. Hey, you see people doing this marriage thing. Me, I don't even have time for marriage. I do, I come, I go, if you're like, ah, this woman is enjoying life. She's not enjoying life. She's telling you the good part of what she's experiencing. I don't see anybody like that likes loneliness. There has to be a way of communicating this thing. Now, let's look at different ways. I just want to touch on a few things and then we'll move to Q and A. So, you know, I just want to lay a foundation. Now, how do you know when a marriage is going to hit the rock? What are these different signs? One of the signs here is stonewalling, where, you know, issues have been dragged for so long that to that point, nobody wants to hear the other person anymore. You just get to that point, you know, ah, only you did something, uh, uh, it's like I, I came in, you forgot the key again. At the end, I know some people forget keys. When they open the door, they forget the key, and somebody can take that key and mold it and enter. So, if you have a partner that has, um, you know, is very meticulous, wants things to be done in proper way, the person, that kind of a thing can tri trigger the person. Oh, you left the key again. Eh, is it only me? That's you, how you two left shoe there. I nearly stopped. So, we have now left the issue we are supposed to address. We are now addressed. We are now turning to personal attacks of each other. So, it's now become a character attack or attack on the person's personality. It's no longer the issue we are talking about. So what happens, it, it, it gets to that point where the emotions now build people to begin to shut down. I mean, you know what? I don't want to talk about this. Let's just leave it. Another one is contempt or harsh criticism where you are looking for your partner to make a mistake so that you can give him the way you feel. You know, the way you feel, you know, some people say like, I like to say the way I feel. You know, the way the thing is burning me because like, he's not getting it, she's not getting it. I need to say it the way I'm feeling it. But if your boss criticizes your work, you don't say it the way you are feeling it. You see the boss like this, be like, ah, the way I'm feeling it, the man will say, you know what, sorry, you can't do this, or, or let's say those who are on rotor, sorry, there is no shift for you. You cannot say, how dare you? <laughs> you, <won't even laughs> you control that, so the way you are feeling it has a way, does not express itself everywhere. <laughs> it expresses itself only some places. These are some of the signs. So contempt, defensiveness, stonewalling, tuning out your partner. So as your partner is saying something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but you've tuned up, you've tuned out. Everything they are saying, you cannot hear. You are hearing them, but you're not paying any attention. What did I just say? Uh, you say, mm, yeah. You know they're not paying attention because you see the person as a painful person. If the person comes into the house, it's no longer that excitement. Your eye does not light up when you see them. You know, when you were, when we were dating, you date like this, you see each other off, then you stay by the door, by the gate. You talk, then you say, ha, it's late. Too. You walk each other back again. You stay by the other side. Oh, you walk. Oh, I don't want you to go by yourself. You walk each other again. You stay, oh. G, 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 mosquito will be biting you. No mosquito. All the mosquitoes that will bite you for where they are not penetrating because that love is shut down every pain. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are blowing with you. That is, security people are coming. You're like, yeah, Baba, Baba. <laughs> we are giving the Baba, <laughs> sorting the Baba so that you can talk. And then they gave us um, those days um, free call at midnight. People would talk and then they would sleep. Are you sleeping? No, I'm not sleeping. You continue. <laughs> In the morning, your eyes are swollen up. Why? But you are not feeling the pain because love covers a multitude of sin. I'm telling you. Love covers a multitude of sin. You are just enjoying the pain. You'll be so tired. The moment you receive a phone call, like, I don't want to talk to anybody. You see a phone call, you jump up. All the energy that has been hiding in all your corners of the body, wake, everything. Why? Love is powerful. That's why Solomon said, don't arouse it unless you are ready. Because it's, a, it's, it's fire. 
You know? So what happened to that flame? What happened? There are some simple things that we do consistently that can quench the flame. You know, it's called flame. Flame can be ignited, can be enhanced, can be quenched. We want to look at some of the things that can facilitate. First of all, let's talk about what's our definition of intimacy. Because sometimes people think intimacy is sex. It's not just. So there, are sexual, there is sexual intimacy, there is physical intimacy, there is emotional intimacy, you know. So let's just give our own brief definition, uh, Chidi and Victor Akuna. Intimacy is a state of emotional safety. Let's pause there. What is emotional safety? Where I can be with her, I can be safe, I can share my weaknesses, share my aspiration without being afraid that she will use it against me later on. Because many people are not emotionally, they, don't, they, are, not, they are not relaxed around their partner because they know that if they sleep, they will regret it. So how do you connect with somebody that you're always behaving like a security officer around? You're always looking at, yeah, you say, no, no. You are calculating every move. You don't even have time to love each other. <laughs> it's better to go and join the police force or join MI6. Because it's, what you have is not relationship. It is situationship. You are in a situation. And a good relationship, if a woman is in a happy marriage, she glows. You will know. If a man is in a happy marriage, the way he works is different. He will be bouncing. There, are, there will be obstacles that everybody will be like, ah, this is difficult. He doesn't see that difficulty. Because there is something, there is somebody that is relying on. You know the name God used to describe a woman, a wife in the Bible is similar to the name he used to describe the Holy Spirit. Paracletus. A helper. The helper that God has given you. Sometimes your helper can be smarter than you in an area. That's why it's a helper. If I'm running a business and I'm not good at maths, what do I hire? A helper that will help me balance the books. Why should I be competing with my helper? Ah, you're not balancing the book well. How do you know? You, if you knew it, why are you not? You want to be chartered accountant in ACCA that you don't have. Because some, if you have a partner that is good in an area, allow them to manage that and minimize stress. Some of us men may not be good with managing money because we are like um, Mother Teresa when it comes to money. Somebody calls you, just wired money, just wire, just wire, because it's your nature. You like to give. Your wife comes with the other balance scale, which is, what do we have? Let's apportion this amount. Sometimes the other way around, the woman is the one that is Mother Teresa, but you need someone that is a business person that will say, what resources do we have? What? You see, so we can create that balance. So our definition of intimacy, intimacy is a state of emotional state, emotional safety, which creates an ambience of deep and meaningful connection. Deep and meaningful connection. You just connect with this person. You are relaxed around this person. Both of you can, can discuss deep things that even your parents do not know. If your sister knows more about you than your husband, you don't have deep and meaningful connection with your husband. If your, sister, your brother knows more things about you than your wife, you don't have deep and meaningful connection. Deep and meaningful connection means vulnerability. Being open. Being open to your partner. I'm working on this. These are my aspirations. This, that's what it means. Once this, you begin to create this kind of atmosphere, sex is easy. Parenting is easy because both of you are discussing with each other on how to parent. Because sometimes, our parenting is influenced by where we are coming from. Some of us, our parents, the, the moment they are coming like this, everybody is diving. They are like the king, the tri lion of the tribe of their, <laughs> of their house. But another person came from another angle where if the parents want to discipline, discipline they communicate. So you, you are coming from a tough hand this other person coming from a community. So if you don't have that conversation, you will not create that balance. For my dad, for example, if my dad wants to discipline you, he will just call you, sit you down. By the time he's done talking to you, you don't have the legs to stand up from that place. Because you will appeal to your reasoning. You feel like, how, how can someone like me do this? Even <laughs> but my mom will not ask you a question. <laughs> As she's walking like this, go, 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 go. you will not know what is hitting you. How many hands do she has? So the two combinations help me to be who I am. One is uh, back. The other one is 
think well, know who you are, think forward. You see the balance. But if there is not the conversation, one person, you know, it will now become too much. I just want to touch on a few more things and then um, life's about relationships. You know, sometimes because you have been, I want to speak to a single person here. Because you have been jilted, you may say, I don't want to do my men. Men, men are, <laughs> thank you for helping me complete it. <laughs> no, I cannot say something when I'm on the altar of God. <laughs> so, if I throw it, help me from that angle. Women are, <laughs> do you see, that mindset is very powerful because it can repel a good man. Because you don't want something that is the name that was mentioned, your brain somehow will push away something. You know, the, you know the scripture said that as a man thinketh in his heart. So your thought pattern can either attract something good or something bad. I will stop here for a while. So, okay, let me just round up by saying, how can we now improve the relationship? Number one, you need to know where are we in our relationship. Are you happy where you are? Are you happy the way things are? If you are not happy, you now begin to say, where, what kind of a marriage do I want? How, do I, how will it look like? So you can say, today is um, 14th of April. Let's say, you want to say, in about two months' time, how will I want my marriage to feel like? You know, like, I wake up, how do I want to feel towards my husband? How do I want to feel towards my, my wife? And describe it clearly. Why do I, we often recommend for you to describe it? It's good for you to have something very clear in your mind because the mind works in pictures. If I tell you that I parked a red Mercedes, you will not see the word R-E-D. You probably picture in your head you know, because the mind works in pictures. So you have to clarify what you want, which it was as a man thinking. It has to be clear what you want because sometimes people know what they don't want, but they don't know what they want. You can ask some single person, what kind of a man are you looking for? I don't want a man that cheats. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. What do you want? Hey, I don't want, I don't want to. What do you want? They are not clear about what they want. So when the angels are delivering men, they are like, oh, this one, this one, they will dodge. <laughs> because you're not clear, it's not, it's not clear what you actually want. You need to be very clear, specific, this is what I want. If you read this book, The Fourth Dimension, you understand this principle I'm, I'm, we are sharing. Uh, what's the name of my, by Young Cho? He shared this principle. It has to be very clear what you want. Because God says, whatever thing you desire thing specific. Don't say, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. So you keep attracting more of what you don't want. If you are in a relationship that Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. 3, Mr. D, Mr. They, are, they all don't know each other, but they behave the same way. You are the one attracting them. You are the common denominator. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking to singles now. So sometimes a single person say, ah, this guy, maybe he too is, he was not available. Second one will blow hot, they blow, not available. Third one will blow hot today, no. You are the common denominator. All those guys don't know each other, or all those ladies don't know each other. That means you are the common denominator. You are the one attracting this type. There is something in our belief system that needs to change so that we would stop, which is start by what exactly do you want? What kind of a marriage do you want? Then why do you want this kind of a marriage? Because sometimes, when marriage is under intense pressure, you need to understand why you are in this. You know, you have to remind yourself, we are in this, I'm in this relationship with her to fulfill purpose, to do what we are doing. You have to have something compelling that will hold you. You remember the scripture says that the man that hears the word and does them, and the one that hears the one that does not done, it's like a, it's like uh, the one that does not hear and does not do it, like a, someone that builds a house upon the sand. The other one that hears and does is like someone that builds a house upon a rock. Have you explained that? Have you noticed that two of them experience the same thing? The wind, the everything happened to the two of them. But what determines is how they stand is what they have built on. You need to know your why. You know, when I was trying to complete my PhD, it was very challenging. I almost dropped out. But one thing that helped me there was I said to myself, how will I write the, have the moral right to tell my son, pursue your dream, pursue your dream when I abandon mine? That was my why that held me there. Guess what? Our son had not been born then. But I just had to create an anchor that would hold me so that I will not throw in this towel because of the in, because of, you know what? The Bible says that 
because of the pain, you despise the, you know, for the hope that is set before you. And finally, uh, no, not finally, personal development is good for us to develop ourselves. You know, one of the things I attracted you to my wife was when I entered her room, I saw books. I was like, wow, this woman reads. You know why? Because when the time, the chips are down, you, you want to ask, consult the people around you. And if you have people that give you bad advice, your marriage is done. So I needed somebody that has, beyond people, a balanced frame of reference. Someone that has read, someone that can have many things that she can use to assess and say, oh, this guy may be behaving like this way. I know what to do. I know how to, you understand? So knowledge is power. The final point is partnership. The people around you. If you have five friends, I'm sorry to say this, I'm not against uh, uh, anyone, but if you have five friends who have opted out of their marriage, you will soon be the sixth one. You know why? Friends of a feather flock together. We, we, we rub off on each other. If you have five millionaires that are your close friend that you talk to, you will soon be the sixth one. That is why our parents used to pull our ears out from interacting with some people on our streets because they knew this principle. The area I lived when I was growing up was very rough, but my father forbade us from interacting. So we were, we were in the world, but we we're not of the world. We, we were kept in a certain way, and to the glory of God, our life has not reflected where we came from. This is the principle they were practicing. They knew it. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Akuna. God bless you. Yeah. Any question from any corner? Thank you, sir. Can we please hand the mic over? Please, ready. If you have any question, don't be shy. It's a platform to ask questions. Amen. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, good morning, church. Um, my name is Baba Femi. I see that you try to wrap up a huge book into a pamphlet. I could feel it. If we give you a day here, you will break it all down, right? I will, I will, say, I will still say my question, but um, I can relate totally to everything that you've said so far, right? And um, this is because I'm married to the best woman in the world. Wow! I'm, it, it's not, I'm not, it's not gain saying, you know. You know, she is the most beautiful woman from Aqua Ibom State. <laughs> you know, you know, she, see her here. Yeah, yeah, you know, and where we are going, by the time we are done, her parents, eh? Anyway. So, <laughs> so, my question is that, Please, can you briefly touch on the impact of culture on marriages? You know, um, I'm asking this question because I need to appreciate my wife again. You know, she's from a quiet mom state. I'm from Ogun Samuel Yoruba guy. You know, and I remember very well that her dad wasn't quite open to that thing, you know, based on his experience. But this babe, say my lie, <laughs> you go kill me, not this guy, you know, and I, I really, really appreciate that. I'm saying this because I have lost one on that basis and I see what culture is doing in marital decisions. Culture from the perspective of parental background, mm. you know, ah, no. Is that how you want to be doing when you go to your husband's house? Culture, by way of upbringing, don't let any woman tell you what to do. Mm. If it's Yoruba, don't bring them to this place. Mm. I don't want a foreigner, white people, don't bring them here. Mm. Culture, Igbo people, I'm sorry to say, I love them. Yeah. 
So please, can you just briefly mm. break culture's role, cultural role in narrative decisions? Mm. Thank you. Wow. May, let's give him a round of Thank you so much. That's a very powerful question. Yeah. Very powerful question. Hmm. I'd like to say by defining what culture is. There is a man by the name Jess Hosted who described culture as the collective programming of the mind. Look at that word, programming. So culture is our software running in our head. And the software that is running this determines what it can do. It's our thinking, it's our belief system, it determines how we manage conflict in marriage, it determines who we marry, it determines what we see as opportunity. Someone said that we don't see problems and situations the way they are. We see them the way we are. So somebody else will come into a place and say, oh, let me tell you a story. There is someone came here, for example, nobody's wearing shoes. And the person looked around, looked around and just left and just says, ah, this place, they, they are so backward. Nobody's wearing shoes. Another person walks into this place like, ah, nobody's wearing shoes. Man, money, that's opportunity. Means I can manufacture different shoes, different colors. I can see they are well dressed. In other words, I can get into the business of shoes. What is the difference? Perspective. And culture is what shapes our perspective. So now, another way culture also impacts us is how we manage money. You know, who we marry. So you have a situation whereby because because one person had a bad experience with somebody from a certain tribe and they make a vow that nobody will marry from them. That's how powerful culture can be. So anybody from that family that wants to marry, like he intermarried, that may be some of the challenges. It's not that they are bad, it's just that they have concerns. But the thing about culture is that it's handed over to us without us questioning them. You remember the scripture says that you have made the word of God of non effect because of your tradition. Do you remember that in the scripture? That's what the Bible was saying. Jesus Christ was saying. You have made the word of God of non effect because of your culture. So culture has its positive side, its negative side. But we have the Bible culture that should guide how we do things. I was going to give an example earlier on in terms of how culture shapes our thinking around money. So in our culture, for example, the man has to provide for everything. His money is our money. The woman is to look fine and cross leg. Her money is her money. Your money is our communal money. So if the woman is a bank manager, maybe not here, if the woman is like an online content creator that is earning 5K every month, and the guy is doing shifts and is nearly dying, like I'm not going to pay the mortgage, that's why life expectancy for men is lower than women. One of the reasons. Because we are carrying things too much. But what did the Bible say? The Bible said, he that cannot provide for, you know, uh, no, not he. The, the one, the person that cannot provide for is, is worse than if he does. We were not talking about a man. They were, they were talking about the story of widows. So you now see a someone, my wife has two masters, for example. She's a solicitor. Someone like this that is too experienced like this now sits without contributing anything. Is God not going to ask her to give account of the talents and the wisdom? God will require you. My son, my daughter, what did you do with the talents? How did you use it to improve the life of your family? What did you bring to the table? What did you contribute? Some people will say, which kind of table? I am the table. <laughs> Where there is a problem to be solved, solved. Your fine face cannot solve the problem. Business is going down. How can we ex bring up a new strategy? It's now what you have, your networks, those are the things that will change the situation. So sometimes culture has conditioned some women, not all women, to be like they, uh, they don't have to do some certain things. So when you now move to a new environment like this, you just find out that you are out of place. Or when the man feels that, you know, he has to provide everything, that's what makes him a man. Amen. And then it comes to this kind of an environment where culture is different, what we call uh, an egalitarian society, where men and women are seen the same. But in the Bible, though, 
if he's under marriage, they, we have authority. Jesus Christ is the head of the, of the husband. The husband is the head of the wife. But the man is not the head of women. They are different things. If you are married, I am a head. But I'm not the head of all the women here because I don't have authority over everybody. Are we, are we following, yeah? Jesus Christ is my head. I, I am a head. Then both of us now lead our children. That is the authority figure. But if you allow the culture of this land, you know, because we're not just talking about African culture, there is also a negative side of the culture of this land that says that, you know, uh, feminism, women are power. You say one, I say 21. What is that? By the way, that's the way you can annoy me now. I know what to call, who to call. They will ask you to go. That's a bad culture that is already breaking things. That's why I said we have the Bible culture. What is the Bible saying on this matter? That is why an educated person that is sound in doctrine is the best person to marry. You know why? There are different winds of doctrine. It comes and goes. But the people that are building their houses upon the scripture, they are the ones that survive. They are the ones that become the people we want to envy because they are doing something right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Chide, uh, Chide, so do you see culture in another perspective? Yes, absolutely. Certainly not. Um, I think he touched on about every other part I would have. Yes. You know. Thank you. Any well, other? Let, let yeah. me speak to something. It might be a question on someone's mind because as he was speaking, he talked about, he was talking about headship. You know, so sometimes it is a problem for some women when that subject comes up, uh, simply the subject of submission. Mm -hmm. you know, but I think if we were to look at it as well from the Bible, our emphasis is the scripture, and that should be a framework mm -hmm. as a family. If we were to look at it from that point, it says, wives submit unto your husbands. So sometimes as women, we are looking out for our husbands to love us. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it starts with uh, love men, husband, love your wives. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are waiting for our husbands to love us, and we forget that that scripture was not conditional. Mm. It's a command mm. that I have to submit to my husband. Now, does, wh when we say that sometimes, some people are really edgy because they think it's about you being subservient. No, you know, and that's why you, when I love the way God's done it. He's given to us the choice, the power to choose. Mm. So I choose the man I know I can submit to. So when, when I have made that decision and I've married that man, I must submit to him. It also doesn't mean, on the part of the man, that you lord it over her. It just simply means that you understand your role in her life and your role is to download from heaven, to download from God what would run the family. Amen. If I, I, I trust his decisions because I know um, even if he comes up with something and I'm not okay with it, I can still go speak to God about it. And sometimes he'll come back and say, do you know what? I think we'll do it your way. You see, and that's how it works in Mary. And that just emphasizes the kingdom culture. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Any other question? Yes, sir. The King Roger at the front. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for such a wonderful explanation. Um, I would like to ask what recommendations you would give of spicing up a marriage which is already spiced up. Mm. Thank you. I like that. Go on, DK. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, you want to start? Okay, let's start. Okay. One key thing I would like to talk about is building friendship. You have to make your, friend, your spouse your friend. Honestly, building friendship. What does that mean? Looking out for each other's best interest. You are going down to make a cup of tea. Do something for your, do one for your husband. Do one for your wife. The little thing that help you look out for each other. You know, find out, you know, when did you say somebody is your BFF? What does that mean? Yes. What, what will make someone call somebody else they are your BFF? Just give me an example of what will make you call somebody your BFF. Let's say it in Chinese. Come on down, come on. Just joking. Tell me, what would make somebody for you to say, oh, this person is my BFF, my best friend? 
So what will the person so, have done? Someone who has your best interest. Someone who has your best interest. Someone who has your back. Someone that has demonstrated loyalty over a period of time. Someone that will speak up for you. And now later go and find out, is it true? But they will defend you first. Those are the kind of people that you say you'll be, be that kind of person. Build that kind of connection. You know? Second thing I would say is communication, communication, communication. Talk and talk and talk. I'm not talking about, um, do we need to buy this? I'm, a, I'm at the mall. Uh, what do you need to do? No, not those kind of communication. I will let my wife talk about the levels of communication. Okay. Now I'll come back. Okay, there are five levels of communication. So we uh, look at it as an apex, as a pyramid, right? So we start from the base, which is the trivia stage. And this is where we just, like you meet anyone, you're walking into a lift, and you meet someone, hello, oh, the weather is nice. That's, that's just sharing facts. Then you get to the next level where uh, it's a bit more. You now start sharing your opinion, your opinion on something. In saying that, there are people who do not feel heard in their marriage because whatever opinion they have is shut down. So we have to then grow from there to the point where someone can actually share, okay, this is what I think, you know, and then um, we, we carry on to the point where we get to the peak. The aim is to get to the peak, which is where we have heart-to-heart -heart communication. So at, that's the place where uh, we, have, we share intimacy, like he defined, you know, where I can feel comfortable. As we go through the ranks, you'll see that there's a point where people can also share their views. I, it, it, what that just tells us is that there are levels where as we go up, we are more open. Mm. People drop, let go of their guards. Mm. People feel more vulnerable uh, before the other. So we, our aim as couples is to get to the point where we can have heart-to-heart -heart communication. But that won't happen if we have not created an environment that is emotionally safe. So if the environment is emotionally safe, I know that if I share something with you, you're not going to judge me, okay? You won't uh, criticize me. Uh, we won't have a misunderstanding uh, someday, and you tell me, oh, that's how you always, or you refer to that point to use against me in that moment. No. So it's to aspire to get to the top where your spouse truly feels comfortable to share anything. To share their, sometimes people are okay sharing uh, their goals, their achievements, but then they're, they're concerned about sharing their fears and anxieties with their spouses. And we have this in, on different levels in different aspects of life, uh, this different aspects as pertains to our marriage. Uh, they may not be comfortable to share their anxieties even as regards their sexual lives, uh, okay, because they'll feel, oh, he's going to wonder where have I got this opinion from? Where have I got this? But then it's eating you up and it's affecting the that aspect of intimacy in your marriage, but you're holding back. So the aim is to get to where we can share heart to heart. Another thing I would like to say is that spice things up a little bit. I mean, that's same if you use cutting, it's the same cutting every time. Change the cutting. Because men are motivated by what they see. You know, there are some beauty children here, but you know, you are like, you know, you're lingering, you know, you're lingering. You know, you know, yeah? I mean, just change it that once you pass like this, the guy will drop the laptop, even though he has a deadline. By <laughs> Let him see something completely different. You know, some of us have plates that will keep only for the, you know, for all those Jim Jim brothers. Your husband is the king in the house. You know, when we were growing up, we used to have this shelf that comes out twice a year. <laughs> all the plates. The best plate in the house should be for the man, to be for your husband. But we'll keep it when all the people come. You not bring it. When you plate, you just give him one rubber plate. No. Mike Mundok, Dr. Mike Mundok said that it's a king and a fool in every man. The one you speak to is the one that responds to you. If you speak to a man like a king, you have to rise up to that, to that standard. You have to rise up to that standard. You know, that's another thing we can do. Another thing we can do is to sometimes leave your environment. Because sometimes when you are used to an environment, it doesn't allow something. Have you seen some of you? Some of you have not left this food. The highest you have gone to is not empty. You just go, 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 go. Even now when you were not pulling down, you just say, let's go, let's go, let's go. That, what is it? See, are they chasing you? The Bible says the Lord is the, the earth is the Lord. And go and enjoy other places. I'm speaking to myself too. <laughs> there are 
are some holiday spot where they have blue water. I need to go and put my leg inside it. We'll just be walking, 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 postponing enjoyment into the future. You know? And postponing enjoyment. Okay, when I get this, I will do this. Then you get that one. You doesn't know. It is, you know what they taught us in economics? Human wants are what? Unsatiable. It's a rat race. Once in a while, sit down and pause and appreciate. You know what Solomon said? It is for you to work hard and enjoy what you have worked for. He said it's the gift of God. Some people gather it and give it. Some people gather it and lose it. Some people don't enjoy life. It's the gift of God for you to enjoy life with the woman that you has built with you. Not the woman that, came, that was plug and play. They are not the same. <laughs> plug and play is different from the one that built. If you see me when I got married, my neck was very long. <laughs> I'm telling you. This is what I tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, when you get to that point, you want to enjoy with the person that has seen you what and all and still loves you. It's not the same. Praise the Lord. Yeah. There are many more, but... Let, let me share okay, something. Uh, I like the fact... I like your question, sir. Uh, because sometimes when we are enjoying a good marriage, we take it for granted. Mm. So, what it means is we need to reinforce what we're already doing and then add to it. Uh, one point I just wanted to throw out would be to play. Now, sometimes we think playing is just for children, but we need to learn to play as uh, spouses. Uh, why? Because it has its benefits. When we play, there are hormones that are released, uh, like dopamine, you know, feel-good hormones. And those things help your health. You, you realize that you feel younger, you actually look younger, you know. So we need to take advantage of that. Uh, there are people we work with sometimes, and they're like, we don't have time to, you know, be with each other and just get so cuddly. But you get to sleep with each other sometimes, uh, even if you're running different shifts, shifts. There are days you sleep together in bed. How about you take that moment to cuddle? Because at that point, there are hormones that are released. They're called bonding hormones. So they bring you closer to each other, and that connection is strengthened. I thought I'd share that. Amen. Wow, that's very, very good and very... I have a question. If Somebody have a question? Oh, go on, yeah. Ha, one minute, please, in case I might forget. Um, in the environment we find ourselves, a garden of water, Dr. Victor said, how can we balance relationship or romance whereby I go to work, you go to work. By the time we come back, we're both tired. Uh, with the man I married, <laughs> he's on the phone 24 7. If somebody called Pastor Stephen 3 a.m., he would pick up the call. It was a bit, I wasn't comfortable with it when we first started ministry. But later on, I just need to understand his calling and I have to work by it. So I'll, some people might still find it, finding it very difficult and struggling with it. How can we balance that? That's a real question, especially in the UK. Yeah, because uh, people sometimes underestimate. Now, I know there might be people who just came newly. People underestimate how long it takes to settle into a new culture, to a new system. It takes a while. There are many things you need to understand. There, has, there are, you know, um, there, there are, sometimes it will take you a long time to stabilize. So now begin to say, now you, you now want to do, live life a kind of, to move away from survival, that's what I'm trying to say. To not begin to thrive. So that pressure can impact marriage. And so one of the things that we advise people is sometimes you need to schedule things. So what does that mean? We know that the way we are working like this, you will not have time. Block out one day in the week that this, this day is me and you. You lock that day with padlock, you throw away the key. Now even you, we cannot open it. <laughs> that day is you and I. Let there be fire burning, call Dickie. <laughs> yeah? Um, you know, that's the only way, because I realize that because we are 
most of us here are young. You have energy to work. And if you are not careful, the next work, the next work, the work doesn't finish. It looks like, I need to quickly submit this. My wife is always having a target. I'm always having, I'm in the academia. The, if you don't do, if it's not marking, I'm doing this, I'm preparing this, I'm preparing all year round. And some of us have side hustles. Some of us have more than one side hustle. So what do you do? You don't have extra 24 hours. It's not the same 24 hours. But you have to do these things because you want to have a better later on in life. So it's a good reason. But we have to find that balance to say, this one, because sometimes, my wife says something that we take good marriage for granted. You know when a plane has taken off, when it's taking off, it's when energy, in fact, they shut down some devices just to be in the air. Once it's in the air, can even put it on autopilot. It's just, it's the pilot to come and be juicing you people, uh, the thing is flying. <laughs> if the... <laughs> If the free are finished or something, you now know that it's not the Holy Spirit holding you up there. <laughs> it is the law of, uh, what do you call it, aerodynamics that is sustaining you. That is something, that is a law at work. So what I'm trying to say is that when a good marriage is in the air, it's cruising, sometimes we take it for granted. Is you not my wife? I will just do that, I will apologize. Is you not my husband? I will do it, I will apologize. You know, she will understand. He will understand. And then it's going, and then it takes two weeks. You are not really connecting. Then one month, then after a while it becomes normal. That you can go for months, you are not, you don't even know. You are finding out about your wife from other people. What is that? Oh, it's, she has gotten that job. Hey, uh-uh. you know, they say you've got it, <laughs> and you are in the same house with the person. That is not a very good sign. So it's good to just start with one day. We have everyone will wake up, we just we talk. In the evening, we talk. That is our way of keeping touch and keeping tab with each other. So there is no surprise that will just spring up somehow. So everything about work is done during the day. Do your thing during the day. But in the morning and evening is shut down time. When I finish my PhD, because when I was doing PhD then, I would be in the work, wake up in the morning. We used to do a devotional. We would type and edit the devotional. We would post it. And then we would go to work. And then we will come back. When I come back, I'm not going to the house. I'm going to the library till 1 a.m. at night. Then coming back, that's how my life was. But I told myself, once I finish this thing, I need to prioritize my family. So weekends, I try not to do anything work except this type of work, which is ministry, which is fun. We are doing it together. It's not like I'm going away. She do not know where I am. You see? So you just have to, that's my own personal commitment, and it has been helping us. Because if you don't block out time, Work with it into it. There's a law called Pareto Principle. No, Parkinson law. It says that work will rise to fill up the available hours allocated to it. If you are earning 50000 every year, if you don't put a peg and push your expenses, and all the people that are calling you when they see you post a new picture, like uncle, <laughs> they think that this guy is shining differently now. Can you help me? All those, if you don't push the expenses down, they will help you. But the jail, uh, well, Solomon said, when money wealth increase, those that will eat it will also increase. That's what we were talking about. Parkinson law. So if you don't block work, you say you don't move no further. It will encroach into family time, children time, uh, morning devotion time. Every time it will encroach. You will not have time for anything important, which is your marriage. So I hope with this few point of mine. Yes, and there's something we always share, which is having meeting points. I think you described, you touched some of it on some of it, but one that just came to mind I wanted to say is sometimes it, it helps if couples have what they are doing together. So even if you both are not doing, okay, now that would take me a bit from what I wanted to share, but it helps when couples have a, a common mission, right? When you were speaking, you talked about having a purpose. Every marriage should have a purpose. There's a reason God has brought you together. There's an assignment for your marriage. And it's always nice when we go to ask God what, what that assignment is so we can function in that area. You know, we can dominate the seven spheres of influence. They used to say it's seven, now it's eight, right? The, seven, the eight spheres of influence. So we can check, is it education? Is it entertainment, uh, media, you know, government, uh, ministry? So what aspects would my marriage meet, would my marriage influence? So we can come together and see how we, even if we have different vocations, in that area, we have a, a common mission. So that brings us together. 
because we're pursuing that purpose, it, there, there's always that touching point. We can always meet and agree on things on that area. So talking about meeting points too, we can start with baby steps, simple things. It could be uh, 20 minutes to work in the evening. Uh, we had to adopt that at some point and build on it. So 20 minutes to work in the evening, it's time for both of us to talk. But what that also helps is, is strengthening the bond we share. We're touching base as well. But well, it has its health benefits. So we're keeping healthy in that way. So it's just to look for those little, they don't have to be big things, but look for little, little things that uh, you can do together and then build on it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much. We haven't got much time, session. but we'll take that. Yeah. So I have like two or like three questions. I'll just try to put it together. My number one question is, how do you deal with a traditional man? For example, you're not married to your man. He's already saying, call me father. <laughs> and mm. when you're talking to him, he's already saying, I'm older than you. You know, all those kind of, I mean, you're not even married. And I'm like, father, you're not my father. <laughs> you know? And I know that there are some men that are traditional in marriage as well. The way they relate with their wives, the way they want to, because, I mean, I have friends that are married. And I have a friend that is married to a traditional man. I know some, there was a day I called her around 11 p.m. She told me that she was cooking beans for her husband. And she works in the bank. Her husband... Is a, is an, he does his own business, and I'm like, cooking beans by 11 p.m. I was really surprised. Like, our husband said he feels like eating beans. I'm like, really? And you're going to work tomorrow by 4 a.m.? You know, I mean, you have to wake up by 4 a.m. So how do you deal with a traditional man, mm. you know, in marriage and even in a relationship? Is he even safe to be with that kind of man that is already saying, call me for that? When you get married, are you sure you even want to <laughs> kneel down and raise up your hands? You know, how do you resolve conflict in marriage? And my final question would be, um, is it safe, maybe like you're in your mid-30s, almost 40, is it safe to be in a long-distance relationship? Mm -hmm. Man, practical question. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Man, can you give a round of applause, please? <laughs> practical question. So I'd like to talk about the first one, so you can come in and tell me. The first one, you know the scripture says, Let, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Sometimes we think it's only an unbeliever in terms of a Muslim. It's somebody that does not share your values. So if you know that a traditional man does not share your values, look for a modern man. Because what you have to uninstall will be a lot, and you cannot change any man. Unless even God told you, I'll put before you life and death. I'll advise you. God cannot force me now to say, be born again. Otherwise, everybody will have been saved. He's giving us a choice. So if he's not going to change that mindset, you cannot do anything but be frustrated. So, choose the person that shares your core values. It will not all be the same. No, it's not possible. But core values that are important to you. For me, my faith is important. If the person is not a believer, I cannot marry you. Now, we have faith, and we have faith. There are different faiths. In other words, all churches do not believe the same thing. So, marry the people that share their faith. If you want to marry from here, for example, you know that the person already is listening to the same thing. They share common belief system in terms of what you are listening to. Do you understand? So that's what I will. You don't want to marry the person. You're not trying to change the person. It's going to be a challenging thing. You marry someone that is unequally yoked with you. Unequally yoked is like, I don't know, how many of us have seen a cow? You know, that thing they call yoke is actually put on the neck to make them plow. It's an old way of plowing. So if you have a cow that is big and you have a cow that is small, the yoke will be like this. It will make the plowing very difficult. So energy that you are supposed to use to, something that will take you 20 minutes, will take you two years, or maybe two, 20 hours. Why? You are unequally you, which is now stressful. So a traditional man means that someone that is inflexible with some things. Which means if you, if, if you are feeling led to sow into the church, for example, a traditional man, you say, sorry, I don't believe in that. There's nothing you can do about it. So that's why I choose the person that shares your core values. It makes your life. You see, the Bible says, can two work together? So you are trying to work with somebody that you are not in agreement with. Second point is, um, how do you settle conflict in marriage? That is a way we call it. So I will let my wife talk about the different levels of conflict, and then we will now talk about what we share when in terms of proactive conflict management. Okay, yeah, so we before have you go, I'm like, sorry, uh, all these, uh, because of our time, we're going to be wrapping it up quickly now. 
we are over by four minutes, but we just we're just going to go through all these questions. So pardon us for this. Uh, so the, uh, there are three ways we can approach conflict. So we have the proactive way of doing it, reactive and radioactive. Proactive is that we sit down and, if possible, preempt situations. So say, for instance, a new couple, uh, what would we do if uh, uh, members of our extended family walk in on us impromptly without informing us? Uh, what would we do when the children come? How would, we, how would you want us to go about this? How would you want us to go about dispersing our finances? So we're speaking, we're, we're planning proactively. That way, what that helps with is it minimizes the disagreement between us. Now, conflict in it, uh, we, not every marriage mustn't have conflict. We, we can disagree. We can have points where we disagree because we're coming from different backgrounds, different views. So definitely there will be that disagreement and we need to th talk through them, okay? But we mustn't allow them get to the point where it becomes conflict. Okay? And when it becomes conflict, it's, it's been left so long, it's become protracted. Then it, it, we're, we're not meeting heads at that point. Okay, then we have the reactive way, which is that we wait for something to happen, then we simply react. It's like we're playing catch up then the radioactive is that uh, it, there could be, it, for instance, say, in-laws in a relationship. It's that area where when it comes up in the marriage, everywhere is on fire. It's just too hot. We keep arguing. We keep, we're not going past this issue. And that's because we oftentimes leave these issues until they pi to pile up, and then they become so combustive. So whenever they come up, it's radioactive, boom. It's like, no, 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 and we just can't see eye to eye on that issue. So it's best when we sit down, even if there's an issue we disagree on, we sit down and, you know, talk about it. If there are times when the environment is not right, the atmosphere is not right to talk about this issue, how about we leave it? So what we do is we'll call time on it. So, but whoever calls time out must call time in. So say, for instance, we're going on and on about this issue and we can see that we're not making progress. I could say, do you know what, I'm not, com I'm not in a, the right state to have this, com this conversation, or I feel too stressed, or just, it's just not working right now. Can we come, to it, come back to it later? But if I'm calling time out, I must go back to have that, com that conversation, because sometimes, uh, because of our personalities, now this happened when we were newly married. I am the kind, of, there are different personalities. Yeah. So I am the kind of person, um, the analogy we like to put forward for this is the skunk and the turtle. So turtles are people who, they take their time, they're introverted. They'll take their time, you know, when there's, they, they don't like conf confrontation. They would rather, you know, get back into their cave when there's an issue uh, until the coast is clear. They come out and then, you know, want to have, carry on with the relationship. While the skunk would just come out and spray is obnoxious, uh, organ, uh, um, smell. smell, yes, you know, all over the place. What that simply means is you just come out because you're so, you, you, you say it the way you want to say it. And you don't realize that it hurts your spouse. It does a lot of damage to the relationship. So how about we both decide how to, to express things? So what happened is because I, I used to uh, want to avoid confrontation, I would have an, it would, there might just be a topic we're not going past. And I would say to him, we, let's leave this topic. We'll come back to it. And I, I would never come back to it. So even if he came back, he would be like, we need to talk about this. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I already sorted it out. I feel good. I'm, I've sorted it out with God. <laughs> and he, he, he kept pushing that, no, if your kind of uh, personality is such that one day it would explode mm. because you're keeping it in and keeping it in. Yes, you think you've dealt with it, you know, but what that emphasizes is that issues must be talked through. Mm. If we haven't talked through, it, it might take a number of days to deal with that thing. We talk about it progressively until it's dealt with. If it's not dealt with, it will get to the radioactive state where each time we just touch that issue, the whole place will be too hot to handle. Then the issue of, finally, just to address that question of long distance, I think it's to know best what works for you. If distance is not your thing, then why start it? Uh, but if, if some people stumble on it, so say, for instance, the relationship has started and one of you is transferred or something and you have to be apart, apart, what you need to do is have a timeline. 
you know, that just, they say hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when you know, okay, we have this target, by this year we'll be together, then you, at least you're working towards something, that's a target. I thought I'll throw that in. I guess. Yes, yeah. absolutely, as for the last speaker. <laughs> That's the last one, and we won't take time anymore. We need to wrap up now. Thank you so Th much, everybody. Thank you so much. My question goes, um, I'm a single person, and um, the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked. And in my church, we don't have young guys, you know? Yeah. And I am like, I need to get married. No spouses in the church to be spouses, you know? How, how will I meet my husband? What will happen? That's my question. But can I just say that God is so good. I'm grateful you're here today. I woke up this morning with this question. Do not be unequally yoked. So these single girls in the church, how are they going to be married and where you don't have men in the church? That's the question I had for myself this morning. Praise to God. Hallelujah. Guys, let's give her a This is she being authentic and being vulnerable. God bless you, man. Some of these things were captured in this book, uh, Relationship Red Flags, but I'll just mention a few things. Number one is... Um, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that God will bring from a far country, yeah, the person, that's the way he was preaching, he said that God will bring from a far country the one he wants, he wants to use to fulfill his counsel. So sometimes, you can pray your husband into this space. You have to join evangelism team. I'm telling you, some people meet their spouses in the place of evangelizing, talking about the church. So sometimes the person that you're supposed to marry is in a far country. You have to pray him into the church. That's the spiritual side of it. The, the wisdom part of it, the other side of it is this. You have to, what hobbies, what are your hobbies? Sometimes you meet each other, maybe you like bowling, you like table tennis, in the place of playing table tennis, in the place of serving God, in the place of fulfilling your purpose, you can find the person. I found that in NCCF family house, where I was being an usher. I was just standing by the, you know, usher, you are strategically positioned. <laughs> you are seeing everybody coming. That's how I got to meet her. I was started talking. I asked her name. I asked her what she's studying. But if I was not an usher, maybe not. So in the place of serving God, you find out that you're actually serving yourself. Because God does not love anybody. So, one, join evangelism team if there is anything like that. You might be in the place of talking to somebody you can meet. Secondly, uh, in the place of your purpose, in the place of your hobby, because there has to be something that is connecting the two of you. And three, look around you. Sometimes we have a routine. Church, work, home. Church, work, home. Is it the only speech you are going to marry? <laughs> Nobody knows you. Nobody knows even your office. Most you go, my job here is to just keep my head and do my job and go out. You don't even know, your colleague don't even know your middle name. You just go clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. You say, they greet you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The good morning, you cannot open your mouth because you're always in a hurry. The person that wants to stop you, I'm not talking to you, ma'am, I'm just speaking generally now, yeah? The person that wants to greet you, looking at the way your face is looking like, ah, this is time I just slapped me out of anger. <laughs> I'm telling you, some ladies are there to some guys that, you don't know, for a guy to open his mouth and ask a lady, you don't know what we have to do to build ourselves. <laughs> your heart to be doing boom, 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 like you're going for an interview. I'm telling you, and the lady is now not smiling, not, you're just looking at you one funny way, be like, ah. <laughs> it takes a lot for a man to, it's going, when you want to go and knock on somebody's door, you want to say something, do you know how you feel? That's how most men feel when they want to ask a lady out. <laughs> That's right, their reputation is at, at risk. Their friends will laugh because they are discussed. I want to talk to her. Everybody is pushing you, pushing you, pushing you. When they give you one kind of answer like this, what did they happen? <laughs> <laughs> because you want to manage his ego. It's not easy for us to. So make it easy for us. Stay where you'll be found. If you want to catch a whale, you don't go behind your house. You only catch a frog. Go where whales are. Join your professional body. 
You know? So when we work with singles, we, we give them targets. Surely the ladies, we say, meet five guys every week. Their head often explode. It's like, ah, where will I find them? Figure it out. <laughs> because some ladies' circle of friends are so small, it's just their brother that is only male inside it. <laughs> so their net cannot catch. Oh, you know, just all the male people are your brother and your brother's friends. And you may not marry them because they may be younger than you. Some people don't know that there's a problem with that. Some people don't want. So expand your circle. Expand your circle. Expand your circle. We just, I hope. And, hope. and some people are averse to uh, online online platforms. Yeah, yeah, but what size. we don't realize too is that online platforms include uh, social media. So we're already on Facebook, Instagram. You know, you can get to Christian events mm. online and uh, put, put down your comments, contribute, make contributions there. Sometimes, you know, these men are there as well. They're looking and they're like, they, they might just be alerted to who is this person who made such a brilliant contribution and want to start talking. Where the point on approachability now comes in. If someone approaches you online, you don't shut it down. Why are you online? So you'll be disposed to speaking to the person as long as you also, but one, one thing we emphasize is if you meet someone online, you must take it offline. Mm. You must take it offline in a safe place. So ensure that that happens. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's appreciate them, please. Give them a wrap up applause. Thank you, thank you so much. This is very educative. We thank God. I, I think with Pastor Stephen as well, it was in Canada when I met him. And uh, we dated for, was it two years? Then he moved to England. And then I wasn't looking for any ready-made man because I know that I'm not poor myself. I was just looking for a man that knows God. I don't even know what he, what he has or anything. It was just a man that knows God. And yet, we are here today with the grace of God. So it doesn't matter. There are some things that people say, look up, look into the future of that particular person. Pray and let God lead you. Don't look for six pack or anything. We are women. We can make it as well. Hallelujah. So this is England. Amen. Don't wait for any guy to do things for you. Do things for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Dr. and Mrs. Akuna. We really enjoyed that section. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Victor, once again, for such a wonderful message. It's time for Titan offerings. Media, can you please project the bank account details on the screen? Just in case you don't have the membership number and would like to pay cash, could you please raise your hands and one of the ushers will give you an envelope. I'll take today's reading from The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. It says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen. If you have any pledges that you need to redeem as well, you can do so now. Thank you. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for satisfying our every need and our every need and desire. We're grateful, Father, for coming before you once again to give our tithes and offerings. Father, we pray for blessings in our lives in diverse ways. We pray for all those that have been able to give, Father. We thank you for their generosity. Pray for those that have not been able to make it, Father. We pray that you bless them in every way possible to make it possible next time to give. In France, the prayers in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.